Hello guys! So today I need to do some canning and um, I'm kind of dreading it because I have all these tomatoes. So I'm going to show you guys all these tomatoes that have been ripening on my windowsill and yes I decorated for fall but they're all ripening and this is pretty much going to be like a batch of my tomato sauce or pizza sauce rather. So my pizza sauce and so I wanted to can it. But here's the thing guys, at my sister's house, she has a blender. <laughs> my recipe says to blend everything up in advance. So I was able to do that at her house. Then I was like, okay, I'll just buy myself a birthday present. I'll get myself a Vitamix for my birthday. And then I'll be pretty like up to date with all my kitchen tools that I have wanted. Um, but I was looking on Amazon and there's no uh, blenders for like same day delivery to get them today because I wanted them today because the house cleaner is coming tomorrow so I wanted to make a mess today not tomorrow um, and then I was like okay maybe I could just go to the store and get one and yeah Costco has a couple of them but I don't know so we are going to try this I could either I have two options I could either take my tomatoes and put them in my food processor and kind of chop them up and see and blend that way or I can use my immersion blender. Now I feel, ugh, I can use the immersion blender, but I just feel like that's a lot and I feel like my food processor will just blend them up a lot faster. Um, so I think actually I'm leaning towards more the food processor. I do have to chop them up though. So I'm gonna get started on doing that with my tomatoes. I am defrosting pizza dough because I have a tomato sauce in my fridge that I need to use that didn't can properly from last week. And then I'm also going to see if these chocolate chip cookies are still good. I made the dough like a week ago. It's been in the fridge. Um, so I'm going to make those cookies. I'm going to try them first because I wanted to give some to our neighbor who literally just climbed a tree for Babe because he got his drone stuck up in their tree. And they climbed up on a ladder and then up the tree <laughs> so then got his drone out. So I wanted to make some cookies as a thank you. So. Um, hopefully they are still good. I will try them first before I gift them. Um, but yes, yeah, so I will make the rest of those cookies also. And I think that's what I'll prepare first. All right, guys, I got some trays here. And we are going to bake these cookies. Alright guys, I got my cookies all rolled out and in case you guys want the recipe, I will link it down below. They are the sourdough chocolate chip cookies um, that I like to make, so I will have them available for you guys. They're my favorite sourdough chocolate chip, cook chop chocolate chip cookie recipe that I have found. They're just they're my fave. During those 15 minutes while the cookies were in the oven, and they are ready now. They look good. <laughs> Babe tried the cookie dough. He said it still tastes good. <laughs> he already had some of the cookie dough itself. Um, yeah, they're looking good. So the cookies are done. You know, I mean, they're done. No, they're done, they're done. The bottoms are golden brown. Um, so uh, during that time, I peeled some onions. You're gonna chop them into smaller pieces and put them in the food processor to mince. I prepared all of the seasonings already. So this is just basil, parsley, oregano, um, rosemary, um, salt, and pepper. Um, so I prepared that. I'm gonna have the pizza sauce recipe down below, but this is all for my pizza sauce. So I am going to now just cut these into slightly smaller pieces and I really don't like that center piece right there. It's still brown. Why well, is it brown? We'll chop it off. I don't like it. Okay, 
okay so I just wanted the other stuff kind of ready so that when this is done sauteing I'll be ready to like add in all my dry stuff but yeah I gotta cut this down because my food processor isn't huge and I need it to be able to like chop these up all into the same size so by starting off with like smaller sizes but the same size maybe it'll get chopped up a little better also don't mind the vacuum going on in the background but it vacuums every Monday Wednesday and Friday at this time so I'm throwing my onions in here Right, guys I threw in some olive oil into my stock pot which by the way guys I think you guys saw it but my stock pot is from Amazon so I'm gonna have it linked but it's a stainless steel pot which is fantastic I'm gonna put on my cooktop I don't think I've ever cooked anything in the middle there why is it still doing that there we go okay um, so I got some oil in there I didn't do my onions yet but they're in here not all of them because they don't fit but some of them. Wow, Alright, we got minced onion and not puree this time. Look at that guys. We did it. Babe's over here just making weird faces at me. <laughs> Alright guys, so oil has been heating for not that long but I'm going to throw this in there because I got more onions I need to do. I'm realizing that we're probably going to have to use the immersion blender on this anyway. Whether I do this or not. I need a longer utensil. My whole hand is in here. I got the rest of the onion in there. It's so hard to show you guys with this giant stock pot now. Um, maybe I can order a wooden spoon that'll be here today. Probably not by the time it's all cooking, but anyway, got my two garlic, uh, minced garlic pieces from the freezer. Just threw them in there and gonna let that saute before I add in the other dry things. And I'm gonna start chopping up my tomatoes. So decoring, well, not fully decoring, but getting out that a green piece from my tomatoes and then I'm gonna start pureeing them. Alright guys, I moved all my tomatoes over here on my counter. Even though I probably should have done it on the island because that's where I have set up my food processor, but what can you do? Um, Alright, so I'm kind of gonna, I guess, quarter my tomatoes and throw them in as I'm doing this. I could really only do like a couple at a time, but gotta do what you gotta do in order to not let these tomatoes go to waste. I feel like this might be an okay angle for you guys so you guys could see the food processor and the stock pot in the back, which I do have to mix in a second, but. guys not too bad we can make this work with this food processor there's a couple of chunky pieces in there that I've been like fishing out all right guys I added in my first little batch of tomato sauce added in the dry ingredients and I'm still making some more uh, tomato sauce with these tomatoes obviously while pureeing them so I'm just gonna keep throwing these in there
stock pot may be a little bit too big, but it's fine. I want to do this in batches, and I don't know if this would fit in any of my other pots, but I want to do it in batches because I don't want to get overwhelmed with the canning. I don't want to have to can all day multiple times, just like one thing a day with like five or whatever jars that fits in there. I think actually eight fits in there for pint sized jars. So I want to just do it one time, but get a lot of jars done, if you know what I mean, instead of having then to wait for the jars to heat up again and like the whole process and the cooling down, because that takes a long time. So that way I could just do it once and be done. <laughs> you see, it doesn't look like a ton, and I'll actually be fine with this um, spoon, but yeah gonna put the top on and maybe I won't even get to can today. Maybe this is gonna be like a tomorrow morning thing because this needs to simmer down. So guys, I just had a cookie. We're doing uh, the date night outside today on the pool, but we just set that up and then I had a cookie and they're not cooked. So this batch is okay. All the tops and everything look great. This batch, now that it's cooled down, looks kind of wet on top, so all of that is like not cooked cookie dough, and this is one of the, one of the cookies I just had. Um, so I'm preheating the oven again, and hopefully I could just cook them for a little bit longer and just put them back in the oven. My tomato sauce is still cooking. It's going to be a while. <laughs> it's going to be a while of cooking, but I thought in the meantime, since we're having pizza for dinner tonight, and I wanted to try out my pizza sauce that I canned last time, but I had a pizza sauce that didn't like pressure can and didn't seal properly. So I wanted to use that one. And so that's why I'm defrosting pizza dough. We're having that for dinner today. And so I am going to cook my mushrooms with some garlic. And I just love adding that onto our pizza. It's like my favorite pizza with some mushrooms and some garlic, um, the sauce. Sorry, I'm making a lot of noise. Add some oregano, some garlic powder, um, and then some cheese and the pepperonis. I have like the large pepperonis that are just, oh my God, they're amazing. Um, and yeah, so, oh, I have to make sure we have some defrosted cheese. So let me get some things get together here. All right, let's see. Do we have any defrosted cheese? No, we don't. I'm glad I checked. Um, so we only have Colby Jack cheese and then Mexican style cheese, which I normally never get pre-shredded, but I got it from my party, um, but then didn't use it. All right, let's get some cheese. You guys like my stash of cheese? So this is all cheese here for the most part, except for the first thing that's a beef liver. Um, but I have some more cheeses down there um, that didn't fit in this little compartment up here. And I got my chicken pot pies, my raw milk, some other bread goodies. This is just the freezer in the basement. Hi, cutie patootie. How you doing? Oh, you're so sweet. We got to cut these nails. Look at that super long nail right there. Oh, my goodness. We got to get your nails cut again. They grow so fast, right? You know. You know they grow so fast. Oh, my sweet baby. I love you. Can you guys believe we've had Hazel for a year now? On my birthday on August 26, we hit a year. So by the time you guys see this, it's gonna be a year and a month or whatever, but yeah, we hit a year on August 26 that we have had her and she's just been such a great addition to the family and I love her with my whole heart. I had thought I set a timer, apparently I didn't, and my cookies got a little crispy. But you know what, they'll be fine with some more milk, which I also need to defrost. Totally forgot about defrosting some milk, but while I'm coming down here, um, I thought I would bring down my trays because I used my dehydrator and I made some apple chips the other day. You guys didn't get to see it because I wasn't vlogging or filming that day. Um, but I have my dehydrator in the basement because it's just it's so big and bulky and I didn't realize this thing, the 10 tray one is also wider and longer and deeper than the six tray one. I thought the 10 tray one would just be taller. Boy, was I wrong. These trays are like double the size of the six tray one. So I keep it down here um, off the counter, off the island, kind of keep it and clean up there. And it's totally fine because this runs for like, I don't know, sometimes even 20 hours, depending on what you're doing. Um, I had my apples, I think for like 
uh, 12, I want to say, and that was good. Um, but yeah, depends on really what you're dehydrating. Sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. So with that amount of time, just keeping it off the counter and keeping it down here. <laughs> Let's not forget my raw milk this time. So I'll bring this upstairs and this is going to take about three days to defrost. I'll probably start using some tomorrow, but it won't be fully defrosted. Just a little bit of it enough for me to have like a cup of coffee. Um, so that's kind of just what I normally do. Here is the dehydrated apple chips I made though. And they're so good. Mm. I could always rehydrate them and add water, but I just like eating them plain like this. It is time to make my mushroom and garlic kind of mixture. I'm gonna put you guys right here and just look it on the stove top. So I like to um, well, heat that up, but I like to make mine in some butter. So that's what I'm going to do here. Mm, I'll use that whole thing. Alright, I do like to add in two of my garlic cubes from my freezer. And I'm going to throw in my mushrooms, but I'm going to give this a quick rinse. Sometimes the mushrooms say that they're washed ahead of time. Sometimes they say wash before using. I normally get the mushrooms that aren't even sliced, but my sister was ordering this time and I just happened to be going over her house. She asked if I needed anything and she was like, they're the same price. So I might as well just get the slice. I was like, okay. But I normally peel my mushrooms and then slice them. But this works too. They're just thicker slices than I would have sliced them myself. All right, and I'm gonna throw in my mushrooms. And this garlic defrosts um, fairly quickly, so if you guys have never like frozen your garlic, definitely give that a try. All right guys, my mushrooms are done. My tomato sauce is still going, but it has cooked down a ton. These are my burnt cookies. They've had one. They're a little crispy on the outside, but they're still soft on the inside. And we just delivered these cookies to our neighbors. And just checked my mail. Got a package. <laughs> my Ignatia tincture. Um, this is great because, oh, expires August 2038. Lasts a long time. Um, so this is why I wanted to grow my own Ignatia flower so I can make my own tincture. This is the one with the vodka instead of the oil. And um, when you're sick, you could just take this, like a couple of drops of this um, with some elderberry syrup, which is also on its way. I'm just trying to do more natural things because I never take like pills and medication anyway. So might as well help myself in some way. And if it's all natural remedies, then I'm here for it. So I'll link the shop down below. It's called Amish Ways, but I will link them in case you guys want to get your own tincture. But this is where my sister got hers from, and I felt so bad, so much better after I had taken it at her house with the elderberry. And it does not taste bad at all, especially with the elderberry syrup that's sweeter. So just all around good to have if you um, want more natural remedies. All right, it looks like it pretty much is nice and like thick. You guys could see and it simmered down a lot I don't know if you guys could see that line down here so it's about halfway I'm just gonna I'm using my immersion blender trying to get rid of some of these chunks all right guys it is time to fill my jars so I'm gonna just kind of be doing a bunch of things right now but I need to open this, I think, yeah, so open this, and I gotta take out one jar at a time, so they are now preheated. At the same time, I also gotta get rid of all the liquid from here, and then fill it one at a time, and also add in lemon juice. Oh, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, my little silicone thing to get out the water. And this on. Where is my stainless steel thingy my bobby? Oh my goodness. So much
much happening. This is not working already because my jars should be over here. because I forgot my lemon juice. <laughs> what is happening here? It's like, I don't know what I'm doing, and then I'm just trying to do it. Okay, got my lemon juice in there. Apparently you need to add in lemon juice um, to, I don't know why, something with a pH or the something. Alright, I got my bubble popper tool here, and I gotta make sure, I think I'm supposed to leave half an inch head space. That's about half an inch, that's pretty good. Um, I don't really know how this thing works. I think I just use it to go down the sides. More liquidy this time than my last tomato sauce, but... That looks good. And then we need to wipe these rims. And then you add on the lid and you wanna do it finger tight. So just where it kind of starts resisting. So not too tight, but not too loose. Then I'm gonna throw them back in there. And you know, these jars don't feel that hot, actually. Okay, here's the next one. Just moving you guys over here a little bit so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. So one tablespoon of lemon juice. You could also do like citric acid. I did that last time. This time I'm trying the lemon juice. Tool. I think this is like half an inch. It's a little bit more, but it's good enough, I think. I mean, the whole thing is that you want to make sure you have the correct amount of headspace because you don't you want it to seal properly. So I'm trying. Clean these jars up, just the rims. Once you get into like a rhythm, then it's not so bad. At least this time it's going smoother than last time when I was really just trying to figure everything out with my sister. This is a little smoother than that. This 
that seemed like chaos and it felt like I was doing it all day long. <laughs> Alright, here is jar number four. And I could have put like the lemon juice in all of them at once, but number one, it says to take them all out individually. And number two, I also don't know if I'll be able to fill all my jars. So I'm kind of doing um, one jar at a time to see how much I can get. able to get one more jar out of this. just able to fill this one and that's my last one I only heated up the five jars anyway because I figured that was all I was gonna have because that's kind of like what I had last time so we're gonna go ahead and deep pop these I don't really know am I supposed to like go around am I supposed to kind of like scrape the sides I really don't know but that's what we're going with Alright guys, so all my jars are in here. Now it says to put the cover back on. So I'm going to take the cover. Um, Alright, now that it's locked, it says lock in place, turn a oh, lower sensor arm and do the green latch. So lock that. Alright, and um, press this play button. Now it should say heat and that's good. Okay here is our dinner. This time I added some burrata on top also in addition to like the regular cheese and some basil. All right guys everything is pretty much done with the canning. It is in the cooling stage so you can't do anything. You just gotta let it cool down for I don't know it could take anywhere from like an hour. It could be an hour and a half. I don't know but I'm about to plug in my immersion blender because I did use it today, um, so I want to make sure I still have it good to use next time I go to use it. And a good trick with wires and organizing wires um, is to like leave these little things from like bread bags and I just put um, the name of what it's for. So I have one for, this is my immersion blender, um, I have one for here and they just kind of stay on the wire which is great, like they don't get, they don't come off or whatever. And this one's for my hand mixer. I actually have one on my charger that you guys were charging on. Let me show you guys. Um, so I have one on here. This is my DJI Pocket. I wish I had a smaller pen to write on that one, but it's fine. Um, so just save those like little clip things from bread that you might buy, burger buns, hot dog buns. Um, sometimes they're on bananas if they're in a bag, um, so just kind of like whatever. Um, and just save those because it's a great way to kind of organize your wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug mine in so that it is good for next time. Goes down here, beautiful, and it'll be nice and charged next time I go to use it. Because last time I was at my sister's house, hers died in the middle of me trying to use it, so that wasn't very fun. Um, I also just got a Target order um, and I got some basil because I ran out to use, to make uh, my pizza sauce so I just got some more and I'm going to fill up my jar. I actually need to order some more jars because I have a lot more spices that need some organizing and I'm not liking them the way that they are so I'm just using my hand as the little holder for this. Let me show you guys. I'm going to put you guys down a little. 
top. So I put my hand around this, use that as a little funnel, and it works great. No actual funnel needed. See, it's perfection. So that is my basil. Um, but yeah, I'm going to order, I think, more of these jars. And yes, I know some people just reuse these jars and they're great, but they're not quite the same. They're almost the same. Actually, these could work, but they don't have the labels and stuff and they're not quite the same. So I am just, I, I need to have things be all the same if I'm going to be doing that. So like all of these ones are the same up here, but down here, all of these jars need some organizing. Um, so yeah, I gotta get some, some more jars. It's beeping because it's done. Um, you guys could see the done sign. So now it had finished cooling and everything. And guys, last time I did this at my sister's house, we were literally doing this all day. I got to her house, I think at like 10 AM or 10 30. I didn't leave until 10 30 at night <laughs> or 10 o'clock at night rather. No, no, I think it was 10 30. Um, I was literally there for 12 hours that we were doing this and doing this at home myself I started at noon um, my sauce was put in pretty much ready by 4 o'clock started heating up my uh, pressure canner to warm up the jars and it is now 619 and a lot of that was hands-off like maybe from like 4 4 I started preheating the things I had to finish up my sauce 430 it was pretty much ready. I had to just put the stuff in the sauce, uh, put my sauce in the jars. Um, we had dinner after that, early dinner, and all I had to do was get up and put this regulator back on, and then that's it. It's been hands-off for the past couple of hours or so, um, and now it's done. So now I can unlock this and open this. Got, oh, wait, hold on. I have to lift that up. And open this guy up the only thing I don't like like you guys know how um, instant pots have like a built-in handle holder like to put this on the side I wish this had that this does not um, so I'm just gonna put it on my stovetop but now my jars are done they should be sealed that is not sealed oh man a couple of these are not sealed um, I don't know why um, but I am going to take them out and I have these little pot holders here, but it looks like a couple of them are not sealed already, which sucks. I don't know what I did wrong. All right, but I got my little pot holders here. At least I didn't have like an explosion of sauce this time, but a couple of them I already could see did not seal because you shouldn't, like these should be caved in, like those. This one, there's a bubble. And yeah, I think it's just this one. Oh yeah, yeah, guys. All right guys, so that is gonna be everything for today's video. I just spoke to somebody and that last jar can ultimately seal still. They say to not check uh, um, up until like at least 12 hours. I mean, it's just to force a habit just to take it out and be like, hey, does it, did it seal? Is the bubble popping? Um, so more, most of them, the bubble is not popping anymore, but one of them is, but they do say 12 hours before to check for the seals and up to 24. Um, so I'll probably just check again tomorrow, leave these on the counter overnight and just check again in the morning and hopefully it's sealed. Um, but who knows? I guess we'll see. But that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will have everything linked down below. My pressure canner, my stock pot and everything, my immersion blender, just everything. So check out the links down below. Um, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching all of these like cooking and baking with me videos. I'm really loving filming them. Hope you guys are enjoying them as well. So thank you. Bye.